Hello, St. Paul's. Hello, everyone uh, who's joining tonight. Evening prayer. We're glad you're here. Tuesday, it's almost six, according to one clock that I have. So we'll just give it a few minutes. And uh, maybe while we wait, I'll tell you about this massive wind and rainstorm which just blew through, which was really quite beautiful. It was um, sunny and then it got cloudy and then the wind really blew and then the uh, rains came down. So it's, and now it's kind of <laughs> back to normal again. So that's fun. Anyway, we're going to give it a few more minutes and then we will begin evening prayer. If you have a prayer book, you can go ahead and grab that. But if you don't, it's fine. I will carry you through. So how is everybody doing? It's Tuesday of Holy Week. Um, while I'm thinking about it, and but, um, before we begin, I, I'll remind you at the end, um, but uh, there will be something um, for you to uh, watch or engage in every day this week at six. Uh, it may not be um, evening prayer. This, this will be the last evening prayer service that we have. Um, but we have something at six every week that you can participate in. On Wednesday, we'll have music from Tenebrae, which we'll live stream from our church. It's going to be beautiful, sung by the men of St. Paul's Choir. And then on Thursday, we will have our Maundy Thursday service at six o'clock. And on uh, Friday evening, we will have an interactive uh, Zoom gathering, and we will look at the um, at the uh, stations of the cross, uh, looking at some art, looking at the more traditional um, stations of the cross liturgy. And then on Saturday evening at six, we'll have an interactive exploration of the Great Vigil of Easter. Um, so there is something for us to do. Um, at six o'clock every day during Holy Week. And there are also additional items that, uh, events and services that happen in the day. So please go to stpaulsrva.org and take a look at all of the offerings. Um, you can also find these things on our website and on Facebook, okay? Um, before we begin our examines, I just kinda wanna read a poem. Um, poets have this way of, um, not overlooking things. They have a way of capturing and a way of being really insightful. And that's what the examines um, helps us with. Um, it's meant to go through the day and catch those moments when God was present, uh, catch those places. Um, and so this is a poem by Mary Oliver. It's called Morning Poem. So just take a deep breath and begin to settle into the space and uh, just uh, open up your ears and, and listen. Every morning the world is created. Under the orange sticks of the sun, the heaped ashes of the night turn into leaves again and fasten themselves to the high branches. And the ponds appear like black cloth on which are painted islands of summer lilies. If it is your nature to be happy, you will swim away along the soft trails for hours, your imagination alighting everywhere. And if your spirit carries within it the thorn that is heavier than lead, if it's all you can do to keep on trudging there is still somewhere deep within you a beast shouting that the earth is exactly what it wanted. Each pond with its blazing lilies is a prayer heard and answered lavishly every morning. 
whether or not you have ever dared to be happy, whether or not you have ever dared to pray. So as we close our eyes and take a few deep breaths, let's prepare to move through our day and notice where God has been present. And let's begin with those very first moments of your day. The first moments that you were awake to this morning. Now let's move to mid-morning, around 10 or 10.30. How is God present to you? Now move ahead to noon, 12 or 1 o'clock. How did God show up in your life? Let's move ahead, 3, 3.30, just kind of remember your breathing. How is God present? Now move ahead to the present moment. What does God have in store for you in this time of prayer? just take another breath in and out maybe relax those shoulders release any tension that you're carrying in your face or your hands or your feet and just allow yourself to be here And opening your eyes. We'll just get started in our prayer book on page 116. Now the sun's out. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turns to night, 
Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And let's say together the Phos Hilaron which is a prayer of light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 71. Psalm 71 on page 683 in the prayer book. And we're going to read verses 1 through 12. 1 through 12 of Psalm 71, which is in the prayer book on page 683. And again, if you don't have a prayer book, no worries. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me. And those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So our gospel reading tonight is from the gospel according to St. John. We're continuing our journey through the gospel of John. And remember last night, uh, Jesus was hanging out with Martha and Mary and Lazarus at their house. And uh, Mary anointed his feet with oil. 
And then immediately after that, Jesus enters into Jerusalem. Uh, and now we pick up just after Jesus has entered Jerusalem with verse 20. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a really pivotal passage in the gospel according to John. And um, the reason for that is because it is, um, it's Jesus' final teaching to the public before he moves toward the crucifixion, toward the trial, toward the cross. He's entering into what we know as the farewell discourse. So this is the last time Jesus is going to be teaching in the public with his disciples and with whoever is around. And that's why it's interesting that um, it starts out, it says, Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. All right, so the Greeks here represent the breadth of the world the breadth of those who have caught wind about this guy, Jesus. And so it's pretty significant that even these folks, even the Greeks, those who represent... Okay, I don't know what just happened there. I think I had a glitch. Anyway, um, even these people have come to find out what Jesus is about. And so that's what's going on here. They say, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Um, they came to Philip, and was from and Philip, who was from Bethsaida, and said to him, "Sir, we wish to see Jesus." And then Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And so they're wondering what's going on. And so this is what uh, Jesus is responding to here: these Greeks who've asked to see him. And uh, so now Jesus begins that teaching, and what he's saying to them is. Um, the hour has finally come when the Son of Man is going to be glorified. And so this hour that Jesus is talking about isn't just the crucifixion. It's the crucifixion, it's the resurrection, and it's the ascension. So it's the entirety of Jesus' kind of salvific life. It's time for all of that to happen. All of that is going to be put into play very soon. And then Jesus talks about this... Um, a single uh, grain that falls, and it's, it can't bear fruit unless it dies. So here, clearly, Jesus is pointing to that, that moment when he is going to give up everything so that humanity can flourish, so that um, a new life can begin, and so that Jesus' life gives way to a fullness of life. Remember, Jesus said, I am resurrection and I am life. He's continuing that theme here. And then he talks about uh, being of service. If you want to uh, serve me, you must follow me. And you kind of have to give up um, what you think the world looks like. You have to give up all of those preconceived notions of, of what the world tells us life will be like. And the, the interesting thing, we, that's, it's on pulpits. I don't know if you've ever seen it on a pulpit. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And so that's what preachers are charged with doing. When preachers preach, they are charged with showing the community who Jesus is. They're charged with showing the congregation what does Jesus look like? What does Jesus sound like? What does Jesus smell like? 
How do we really get into the full experience of Jesus Christ? And that's what preachers are supposed to do. And that's why you'll see that on pulpits or over the um, kind of the altar. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. But the question that I have for you in this time, when we're not in churches, when we're not in our pulpits, when we're not in those traditional settings, the question still comes to us in our lives and in our ongoing ministries. How do you show the world Jesus? How do people experience Jesus through you, through your ministries, through your actions, through the ways that you serve, through the ways that you reach out? How do people still experience church as church even when we can't be in those traditional worship spaces? That might be the teaching of this time that we have right now is that there are people who really are desirous of Jesus. They want to see who Jesus is. And the only Jesus they have to see right now is you. The only Jesus they have to experience right now is you, is us. That's pretty powerful. So I will just leave you with that. Um, The world was going after Jesus here in this passage. And the world kind of came to him and said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And so, how do we do that now? And how are we doing that in our own lives? We continue our evening prayer with uh, the Song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis. And if you have a prayer book, it's on page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with our suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I now invite your prayers, either silently or aloud. We begin with our daily rotation. As we lift up before God those who have become unemployed because of this crisis, 
that their anxiety may be lessened through the support of others and through governmental actions. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who are in need of healing, for Barbara, for Bruce, for Malcolm, for his mothers, Mother Helen and Father Scott, for Bishop Goff, for Beecham, Jim, Jamie and his mother Mary, Liz, Brittany, Allie, Caitlin, Kevin, Joseph, Teresa, Kevin. We pray for those who have died. We pray especially for the repose of the soul of Anna Gamble Blechta, sister of Frank, Frank Mountcastle. We pray for all who mourn the loss of life. We pray for all physicians, nurses, health care providers of all kinds. Joe, Michelle, Sid, for Radcliffe. We pray for patience and compassion as we all seek to live together separately. For those who work in our grocery stores, And we conclude with this prayer for the evening. O oh Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And may God's blessing rest upon you and those you love this night and forever. Amen. Have a beautiful evening, everyone, and uh, don't forget to check out stpaulsrva.org for the list of events that will happen throughout the week. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>